This is Adam, and he suffers from gout. Try Urol. It helps to prevent crystallization of uric acid crystals in gout therapy. Urol, effective urinary alkalinizer for gout. Hello, I'm Pia, and this is Kini News. Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim may consider addressing Deputy Prime Minister Ahmad Zaid Hamidi discharge not amounting to an acquittal for all 47 graft charges involving Yayasan Akal Budi funds in Parliament. When asked if he would take up the suggestions to discuss it, this was what Anwar had to say. <laughs> Yesterday, Pase Gudang MP Hassan Abdul Karim proposed to Anwar to give an explanation pertaining to his alleged interference in Zahid's DNAA case at the Dewan Rakyat so as to put a stop to the issue. Prior to this, Anwar stressed that he had never interfered in the court's decision pertaining to the DNAA granted to Zahid and that it was the Attorney General who had the full power to decide for the prosecutions in the case. A Sabah AMNO lawmaker has claimed that PAS wants Dr Mahathir as the de facto leader of PN. According to him, this can be seen by their move to appoint him as unofficial advisor for the four states under PN. Saleh Said Kerouac has claimed that PAS is moving to make former Premier Dr Mahathir Mohamad Perikatan National's de facto leader. He said this can be seen by their recent move to appoint Mahathir as an advisor to its four state governments. Saleh, who is from Sabah Amno, pointed out that the four states, namely Perlis, Kedah, Kelantan and Terengganu are all past controlled states. In a post on Facebook, he said this explains why PN Chairperson Muhyiddin Yassin was not invited when past leaders met Mahathir earlier this month. Saleh added that he believed Muhyiddin has limited options and could only play along with the decision made by PAS. He said it is a brilliant move by Mahathir if his real intention is to be in the political forefront again, despite the setback in Langkawi during the 15th general election. Saleh was referring to an announcement by Terengganu Menteri Besar Ahmad Samsuri Mokhtar yesterday that four states under PN are working to form an official cooperation group with Mahathir as its unofficial advisor. Samsuri, who is past vice president, reportedly said that Perlis, Kedah, Kelantan and Terengganu will discuss an action plan for the grouping named State Government 4 or SG4. In conjunction with Malaysia Day, from now on to 20 September, you can subscribe or renew your Malaysia Kini package with 20% off. Click the link in the description below or scan the QR code on your screen to enjoy this exclusive offer. The preliminary report on the Almina plane crash was released today. The report has ruled out engine damage before the crash and pilot incapacitation as potential causes for the incident. The preliminary report on the plane crash at Bandar Elmina in Shah Alam, Selangor has ruled out damage to the plane's engines and pilot incapacitation as potential causes of the incident. According to a preliminary report published by the Transport Ministry this morning, there was no sign that the Beechcraft 390 Premier 1 aircraft's engines ingested foreign objects prior to the crash. In the investigation led by the Transport Ministry's Air Accident Investigation Bureau, evidence also showed that the aircraft's pilot and co-pilot did not suffer from cockpit incapacitation, thus the hypothesis of medical causative and contributing factors to this accident may be discounted. According to the report, both the pilot in command or PIC and second in command had enough rest before the flight and based on health history and medical physical examination had no serious medical problems. On witness account, the PIC was reported to be well the night before the accident. The witness also said that the PIC had a good rest before the flight departing from Langkawi, said the preliminary report. The report added that initial analysis of the recovered cockpit voice recorder recording has provided critical leads to uncovering the cause of the accident with a focus on the aircraft flight control systems. 
However, they said the findings will only be released in the full investigation report pending examination of all physical evidence. The incident on August 17th saw 10 people killed when the light aircraft crashed onto the Guthrie Highway near Bandar El Mina. The victims comprised six passengers and two crew members of the plane, as well as a motorcyclist and a motorist who were passing by the area. Jamal has called off the red shirt gathering planned for tomorrow. He said this as PN Youth had changed the venue for the gathering. Sungai Besar Amno Division Chief Jamal Mat Yunus has called off the red shirts movement gathering in Kuala Lumpur this weekend. In a statement, Jamal said the decision was made after Perikata National Youth switched the venue for its rally to Kampung Baru, Kuala Lumpur. He said the Red Shirts movement would only gather if PN were gathering at the Sogo or in Bukit Bintang, but would not be involved in any gathering in Kampung Baru. Jamal added that he hoped the gathering will be peaceful and conducted in an orderly fashion. PN youth are planning to gather tomorrow to protest against the Attorney General's Chamber's decision to withdraw charges against Deputy Prime Minister Ahmad Zahid Hamidi after the court established a prima facie case against him for corruption. Initially, PN youth wanted to gather in front of Sogo and also considered Bukit Bintang, both popular weekend shopping locations. However, organizers announced yesterday that they will instead gather tomorrow afternoon after Zohor prayers at the Kampung Baru Mosque. As of last night, organizers have yet to comply with requirements under the Peaceful Assembly Act 2012 to properly notify the police. Bukiraman Criminal Investigation Department Director Muhammad Shuhaili Muhammad Zain told a press conference last night the notice submitted by the organizers did not properly state the venue of the gathering or the names of the organizers. We are often faced with nutrient deficiency needed for our body. This is why I choose G-Sure. G-Sure is the first plant-based and complete nutrition drink that helps to improve the immune system and strengthen our bodies. It has to be Good Morning G-Sure. Meanwhile, the police have rejected the applications to hold the rally. According to the police, details on the rally had not been included, such as the location and rally organisers. The police have rejected an application to hold a rally this Saturday. This is due to the organisers leaving out certain details in their submission. Bukiraman Criminal Investigation Department Director Muhammad Shuhaili Muhammad Zain told a press conference last night that the notice submitted by the organizers did not properly state the venue of the gathering or the names of the organizers. Shuhaili said that without providing all the relevant details, the police are unable to make the necessary preparations to facilitate the rally. Venue itu berubah-ubah. Yeah? Uh, dan yang terakhir, uh, kami mendapat tahu bahawa ianya mungkin dibuat di salah sebuah masjid uh, sekitar, I mean, dalam kawasan yang lebih kurang dekat antara yang uh, di mana di di Kampung Baru, sorry, di Kampung Baru. So that itself is not helping us, ya. Yeah? Uh, Tidak ada ketetapan daripada pihak penganjur itu sendiri. So ini mungkin akan menyukarkan ramai pengguna jalan raya, itu hujung minggu dan sebagainya. Earlier, the media reported that the police had received six reports regarding the organization of the rally. Previously, PN Youth had wanted to gather in front of Sogo and also considered Bukit Bintang, both popular weekend shopping locations. However, organizers announced yesterday that they will instead gather tomorrow afternoon after Zohor prayers at the Kampung Baru Mosque. Chegu Bart was released from the police custody early this morning. He had been detained yesterday night and questioned over investigations into six separate cases. Police have released the Bursatu activist Bajol Hisham Shaharin, who's better known as Chegu Bart, after having his statement recorded. In a Facebook post, PN Youth Chief Ahmad Fadli Shari confirmed Bajrul Hisham was released at 2.15 a.m., saying, Keep marching, save Malaysia. According to Berita Harian, Bajrul Hisham's questioning was not related to PN's rally to protest the granting of a discharge not amounting to an acquittal to Deputy Prime Minister Ahmad Zahid Hamidi. Bajrul Hisham was detained outside the past headquarters in Kuala Lumpur last night. 
Federal Criminal Investigation Department Director Muhammad Shuhaili Muhammad Zain told reporters that Badrul Hisham was apprehended over failure to cooperate with police investigations in six separate cases. Speaking in a press conference last night, he said the police have summoned Badrul Hisham repeatedly. He added that the police even issued a 111 notice under the Criminal Procedure Code. He said Badrul Hisham received and signed the notice but stated his refusal to be present for questioning. Otai Reformist has stressed that the Reformacy movement is not dead. They said PN was playing up the issues as they are bitter and have no other way to ensure their political survival. Otai Reformist said the attacks by Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim's political foes on his coalition government are baseless and stem from resentment. The group's pro tem chairperson Mustafa Mansour said that Perikata National was using the narrative to cause a split within the government as they have no other way to ensure their political survival other than disrupting and weakening the unity in Putrajaya. When asked about the backlash against Zahid DNAA, Mustafa stressed it was merely a narrative played up by PN, as Anwar has already explained that he does not interfere in court cases. Mustafa cited the quashing of PN chairperson Muhyiddin Yassin's four abuse of power charges linked to the Jana Wibawa program last month to stress on Anwar's non-interference in the judiciary. He said that reformacy is not dead and that they are just playing in different fields. Mustafa added that the coalition government today is also part of the reform agenda, where Harapan agreed to work with BN in a coalition government. PN's relentless attacks against Anwar are due to bitterness of not being able to form the federal government, he continued. Mustafa also expressed his confidence that in the next five years, if they remain consistent with the reform agenda through the Madani approach, Malaysians will enjoy better freedom of speech, freedom in politics and better life values. And that is all for me today. For more stories, you can now go to kinetv.com. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, YouTube and Facebook for the latest news updates. If you'd like to support independent media, do consider subscribing to malaysiakini.com. I'm Pia. Thanks for watching.